Welcome to the online course of Investment Analysis and Portfolio Management. Today is our first day. This is Chapter 1, The Investment Setting, which is always exciting than Chapter 1. Okay, I've told a homophonic joke. It wasn't too cold, right? Okay, enough with the chit chat. Here are our learning subjects for today. Well, investment analysis. What is investment? What is our goal of investment? How can we quantify our goals? Well, basically, it is measured by our rate of return. And also, what do we have to bear? What do we have to undertake to deserve these returns? It's because we face risk, we face uncertainties. But how to quantify these risks? And what are the theoretical source of these risks? So here are the top line of today's learning. Okay, off to the first concept. What is an investment? So essentially, an investment is that you save now to spend in a later time, but with a twist. You have to get the future payment return with a large amount. Why? Why do you deserve a large amount? Well, first, you postpone your spending, you postpone your consumptions. So that's a sacrifice and you should be rewarded for the time waited. You should be rewarded for your sacrifice. So that's the basic reason why you want a larger amount in the future. Now, we have concluded three factors that allow you to ask for a return. So the first is time value of money. So that refers to the time we waited to postpone our spending, our consumption. So that's the first element. Second, inflation. So it's a economic factor. Inflation refers to a certain amount of currency losing purchasing power. Sorry, that's a mouthful. And lastly, the uncertainty of future cash flows. It normally refers to the possibility that you won't get the money back on time and in full amount. So it's normally hard to separate the effect of time value of money, inflation, or especially the risk of future cash flows. But we can always directly see or observe the joint force of the above three elements. It is referred as the pure rate of interest. So it is essentially an exchange rate. Current consumption, future consumption, what's their ratio against each other? So normally it is determined by the market. Why? We know that market is a place where there are normally two groups of let's say individuals or market participators. For one group of people, they want to spend ahead. They want to have more than they can consume. So what they do is they go to this market, they find someone who are willing to lend out their cash. So a borrower, lender, capital provider, and capital receiver. So these are these two groups. And in equivalent, these two find a happy place where this one wants to pay and this one are willing to receive. So that balancing point gives us the pure rate of return. It's a joining force of the above three elements. Now, let's see an example. So we can exchange $1 today for $104 in the next year. So with one year, of waiting, we get a full dollar in surplus. That's our pure interest. And that interest compensates us for first, the time value we waited, two, inflation, three, uncertainty. So that full dollar is the combination of the about three. But can we separate them one by one? Of course. Well, let's talk about the pure rate of money. You must have heard this one saying that $1 today is worth more than $1 tomorrow. Why? 
Because when you have one dollar today, you can always just invest it. And by the end of tomorrow, you will have one dollar plus your interest for the investment of one day. So one dollar tomorrow will be less than one dollar today. Because when you invest one dollar, you will have one dollar plus something else. That's your interest by the end of tomorrow, which will be larger than that one dollar tomorrow. So that's time value of money. And also, like I have just said, in the market, there are people who want their consumptions in at once, and there are people who want to postpone their consumptions. And, and these two groups determined this pure time of money. Okay, we have to go back. In addition to the pure time of body, we need to compensate for the presence of inflation. If you have learned Econ 101, you know that inflation is referring to the fact that one certain currency losing its purchasing power over time. So if we want to have the same amount of consumption by the end of investments, we need to pay for a larger price. So that's why we deserve additional returns. Otherwise, it will just squeezing our real rate of return. So inflation is a outside factors that always influencing the whole market to whole economy. Now the last one, uncertainty. Uncertainty refers to the possibility that we might not have only one future. If we have many expectations, we have many possible future results, then we have uncertainty. And also, if we are unsure about how likely we can receive these cash flows on time and in full amount, then that's also indication of risk. The higher the risk, the more likely we can get a higher return because risk gives us the opportunity to demand risk premium. We will have more to say about risk premium in chapter four, so stay tuned for that. Now, we have covered three elements to help us build up the goal of investments. Now we need to quantify them. We need to have a number to clearly set the goal, to realize our expectation. So these are our rate of returns. How to calculate them, how do we define them. That will be covered in our next video. Stay tuned for that. See you. Bye bye.